Friends, welcome to my workplace at Hiranag Heart, West Bengal, India. This is a hypermature morganian cataract. The patient is a 86-year-old, feeble, kyphosed lady, presented with intraocular pressure of 46 millimeter of mercury, with intravenous mannitol and other anti-glaucoma medications. The pressure has come down to 30 millimeter of mercury and I have taken up this case for surgery. The main incision and two side ports are made and now I am going to stain the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble. Tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble and a bit of adrenaline is then applied because the pupil has not dilated well. The pupil is not even mid dilated. This is about 5 millimeter pupil or 4.75 millimeter pupil. Let us see if we can complete the case with this. Fisco has been injected and now the anti capsule is incised with this needle, a 26 case pair needle and see what happens. Milky fluid came out but I could pierce the capsule easily, there was no wrinkling and a genule didn't appear weak. So at the time of first puncture we have to assess whether there is any genular weakness or not. And next is when we do capsulorexis. In this case this is 2% HPMC. And now I take the uterata forceps, hold the capsular tag and going very close to the margin of the people so that I get a rexis of about 5 millimeter. At this time we have to be very gentle in hypermature morganian cataract. There can be a fibrous band and if we pull that it may cause genular dialysis. We may have to use a CTR. CTR is ready in this case, but the journal is okay and we won't need any CTR in this case. And now is the time to introduce the FECO needle. You can see that the nucleus is free floating. In such cases you can hold the nucleus with bevel down position of the FECO needle. If the needle is bevel up it may not be possible to hold this hard nucleus. So I could hold the nucleus firmly in bevel down position and I have got a good crack but the pupil has become very small the nucleus is hard and the pupil has become very small so this is a very challenging situation and I have decided to use a pupil expansion device the iris has got incarcerated in the wounds, they are released, visco is applied in the anterior chamber and little visco is applied under the iris and now we are going to apply BHEX people expansion device. This is a uh, beautiful people expansion device very thin can be 
applied in shallow anterior chambers and this is how to apply the VHEX. Hold the middle tab. There are flanges and notches. Hold the middle tab of the leading flange and tuck it. Now in this case I went through the right side port. Hold the middle tab of the flange which is just on the left side of the main incision and this is another flange at around 9 o'clock so the flanges are nicely tucked now the surgery will be safe quite safe some more visco and now I introduce the tip of the FECO needle again. Friends, this is a totally unedited surgery. You are not missing anything. You are watching each and every step of the surgery. If you have a very good crack, easy to engage. So I turn the handpiece to make the bevel up and now go through the substance of this hemineucleus larger hemineucleus and now I go through this endonucleus and divide this large fragment into two smaller fragments and now is the time to start emulsifying the fragments. Fico power being used is 80%, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. This is Oatly Cataract 3 vacuumation. So we have emulsified two large fragments and now these two fragments are not free so I use vacuum hold on fragment I use the chopper to separate the two fragments the VHEX people expander is helping a lot in this surgery is keeping the people dilated to about 5 millimeter and this is good to complete the surgery. So this is the last but on fragment. And now we come to the last fragment. I could not rotate this, this um, with these two instruments. So I come out, inject visco. Look at the main wound there is no wound burn. This is the beauty of Cataract 3. The shaft is narrow. There is enough fluid flow around the shaft and the wound doesn't get burned. So I have mobilized the last fragment. We see that there is no cortex in this case just a thick granite hard nucleus and capsule. Fortunately the jonule is ok and this is making the surgery possible and quite fast. If the genule is weak during this emulsification of this last fragment, we must use IOL as a scaffold. But in this case, the genule is okay. The posterior capsule is remaining always far away. So, in such cases, we can avoid IOL scaffold 
but it is very safe to come to FICO on mode during emulsification of the last bit of the nucleus. Yes, during emulsification of the last bit of nucleus, come down to FICO on where the vacuum is only 50 to 60 millimeter of mercury, flow rate is 25 ml per minute or 20 ml per minute and ultrasonic energy is about 70 percent. Yeah, ultrasonic energy may even be 80 percent but vacuum and flow rate should be low. In this case we are going to use a B cartridge so the main wound has been enlarged and this is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens from Appasami Associates. This is known as Super 4. The lens has been placed in the cartridge and the cartridge is has been placed in the injector and now is the time to implant the lens. The chopper guides the lens. The leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag. Now the trailing haptic is has also gone into the capsular bag. And now we have to remove the people expander before we remove the visco. So just hold the any flange above the iris, mobilize the PHEX people expander and pull it out through the main incision. This device can also be pulled out through the side port. And now is the time to remove visco very nicely. We must remove visco from anterior chamber, from anterior chamber angle, from the capsular bag. At this time I'm going behind the eye wheel and irrigating the capsular bag and removing the visco from the capsular bag. So this is we have to spend some quality time to remove visco from capsular bag and from anterior chamber. The patient is having already high intraocular pressure and any retained visco will aggravate the situation. Pressure will increase further and the patient will be very uncomfortable. So you must remove visco very nicely and in that process whatever lens protein molecules are there in the anterior chamber angle they also get most of them get washed out. At this time irrigation and aspiration are being used together to remove visco. So we are towards the end of this surgery. This is a totally unedited recording and now is the time to close the side ports. This is a bit of moxifloxacin and now I hydrate the corneal stroma on either side of the stab incisions and these stab wounds get closed. And now we have to do a final lavage of the anterior chamber. At this time a gentle stream of fluid is directed towards the corneal endothelium and any visco sticking to the corneal endothelium comes out without damaging any endothelial cells. And now this is how we form the anterior chamber. This is how we form the anterior chamber. Then the integrity of the wounds are checked. Few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. So in this, this is a very challenging case. The 
The cataract is a hypermature Morgagnian one with a very hard nucleus and the people become very small during surgery. So we have managed the case quite nicely. Thank you very much for your attention. Please be a great surgeon, improve your skills every day and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical skills.